viewers, welcome back um, to our discussion. Um, we carry on from here. Um, we were discussing about leadership and we have to delve deep a little bit into leadership so that as we go along, we all will understand the true nature of leadership so that we can obviously um, you know, contribute to the welfare of our country, Ghana, because we all love Ghana. Sure. All right, Mr. Charles, can you really um, delve on these topics for me? Um, management skills, okay. um, conflict resolutions, mm -hmm. time management, and you know, um, an influence of a particular individual as a charisma. Okay. Can you elaborate a little bit on that for us so that we delve deep into the leadership? Uh, um, thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, following on from obviously the first few points we raised, um, a good management skills good management skills is key it's also key to good leadership mm -hmm. uh, because as a leader you are entrusted with so much responsibility yeah and you need to manage those responsibilities you need to be have an eye to select good people mm -hmm. you need to have an eye to control the people you need to keep order you need to have order and all this, you know, falls in the bigger realm of managing the situation so that, uh, you know, things don't get out of hand. So that is very key. Um, you also need to have the quality, qualities of uh, conflict resolution. So before you, you go on to conflict resolution, does that mean that management skills um, include organizational skills? Absolutely. That, Absolutely. That has got that, that Absolutely. all that area. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. You need to be able to organize things properly. Mm. And it all comes with also your selection. Uh, because when you select a good selection team, process, yeah. yes, you need to have that eye uh, to get the right people. I mean, we do have this problem in Ghana where, you know, a particular person comes to power. And it is known that maybe they surround themselves with, say, friends and family, you know, um, in their politics. And these type of things needs to also stop on the basis of you have a country, you are running a whole country with different regions. And so having an eye, you need to have the eye to select people that are probably not from your clan or... But, but what about if you know a family member who is good in economics and maybe you give that person that contract or that job yes there is, is, is there is nothing there there, there is, is nothing wrong with that. I, I don't see anything. because if, they, if they've got the capability the yes. ability to you know to um, run that area Absolutely. or that sector why not yes i Do you we, think that is wrong no to, that is not wrong at all um we one wouldn't say that if somebody is qualified and capable and also knowing somebody is important you know if you know somebody you know closer to you that can do something and do it good it is good but it, it is just the excessive nature so for example if i'm to come to power and say um let's say in all various positions i think oh my brother can do it my auntie can do it my cousin can do it then that is the sort of thing that we're talking about. It's not the fact that you couldn't select somebody, but you need to be very broad because you're running a country. So you need to be very broad to bring in people. You've got to let people feel included. So, it, it, so do you think there's something in the constitution that includes um, nepotism in terms of bringing in your friends and families to sort of um, um, attain positions? Because I personally think that running a country is not about families and friends. Correct. You need the top-notch professionals in that all areas. In all areas. So it's open to all. So it means that the structure of sort of recruitment should be very rigorous. Yes. Because you can't just say that your brother is good in economics. So you are just picking your brother. It has to be a generalized Correct. sort of recruitment so that all the brilliant minds will come together and 
you pick the best out of it. Absolutely. And I think with that. Absolutely. Um, so if it turns out that your family member is the best. So I, I just want to know, Charles, do you, do you think there's there's something in the constitution that um, sort of right against nepotism or is um, is, 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 is I, I nothing? Don't, I don't think so because I think if there is, then this type of thing shouldn't cannot, happen. Cannot happen. Okay. I don't think there is, but. Obviously, with the discussion that we are having today, we are going to reach to a point where we are going to be looking at structures mm -hmm. and, and systems. Mm -hmm. and, and when we get to the later stages of it, it I'm sure it will come, it will up, come so, up so you, you get to know. But as, a, as, as you are talking about organization, mm -hmm. when you have the right people and you have that uh, spirit to delegate, because mm -hmm. when you trust people to do things, you can delegate to them. Yeah. And you can trust that, and that in a nutshell comes as part and parcel of the management. Because when you have the eye, you're picking the correct people, do you know that they are entrusted with the responsibility and they are organizing it? And you, you have that, um, you know, that time frame in which to expect them to do things for you. Okay, let's so. hit on the conflict resolution because as a leader, you need to have that skill as well. because. There are so many chaotic conditions and situations that arises when um, in time of office. And when these things um, arise like that, arise, you need to have that power and that authority and that mandate and that skill and that strategy to execute and calm things down. So, Mr. Charles, I just want to know, you know, Talk a little bit about the conflict resolution of a leader. How do you think a leader can? Um, uh, so conflict resolution is, is a very important aspect uh, when it comes to running a nation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are um, programs, you know, there are external programs, even domestically, uh, courses can be run to teach people uh, how to conduct themselves in, in, in public office uh, to ensure that atmospheres are always peaceful. So that you are talking about code of conduct. Yes. It should be. It, it should be paramount. Mm. Um, and also, okay. um, when you basically, as a leader, you need to give the vision to the people that at, at the end of the day, there's only one thing, the development of that nation, Ghana, and the well-being of the people. That you see, when they have this, uh, you, you know, so this sort of deep way of thinking, we can always uh, be a little bit lighter when it comes to us debating issues, and when it comes to us, you know, sharing ideas, and when it comes to us bringing out our opinion, you know, we must realize that we are all for one thing, and that we couldn't go so far apart. So, so which means that if, if, if you want to become a leader in Ghana, then there should be policies that um, sort of binds you to a contract in terms of all these areas so that you have to have that knowledge of when things do happen, what, the structure of how to f the you, know, you proceed. That's right. So proceed. I think I get your point yes. right there. And so when you... When you you sell that idea to your people. They know you have your vision, is to help the nation, that you also respect, you are tolerant, that you respect the opinion of others. But at the end of the day, is the people that are in a response, people that are going to be accountable. Mm -hmm. So for example, we may have a situation where we are debating about an issue, yeah. but let's say in that particular field, Maybe you are the one that is responsible and accountable. So if that is the case, then whatever debate that we have, ultimately your neck is going to be on the line. Yeah. And so uh, no matter what my opinion is, I will let you know so that when you're making that decision or when you're deciding on what you want to do, you have probably considered what we've discussed. But at the end of the day, the responsibility will be down to you because you are the one, let's say the government has selected you as a minister and I'm a deputy to you. In office, we have a meeting. 
I will say my view. It may be different from yours. But for you as the minister is going to be responsible. And so it is your decision that will, obviously your, your ultimate decision that will come forward. And Welcome back. Um, we have to continue from where we left off. And we discuss in the conflict resolution of a leader. So, um, Mr. Charles, can you carry on with what you were saying? Because okay. before he, he carries on, we were talking about policies that are structured yes. to help organization or the, the government to be able to conflict resolute. Yes. Because if there are no structures and things do happen in the offices in terms of maybe embezzlement and other areas of um, it's appropriating appropriateness or yes. what is it called? The disembarrassment of funds. funds. You have a protocol that you go through to check all these things so that everything is going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. So if you can carry on with it. Um, yes. Thank you, Eric. Conflict resolution. Uh, as I was uh, saying before, uh, in terms of the conflict resolution, you will have somebody in responsible responsible position mm -hmm. that will be accountable. So as I was saying before, as a minister, if you're the minister and I'm the deputy, in the, at the end of the day, if we government gives us a, a particular task or if we are assigned to do something, and I may have an alternative opinion from yours, and so in a meeting, I will tell you what I think. But at the end of the day, what goes out there or whatever the ultimate decision of the minister, when something goes wrong, there is a structure that the minister may have to resign. So if, if I have an opinion and I tell you, and you don't want to listen to it, because maybe you have some other idea of maybe doing something to you. Talking, talking about the resignation aspect of it, we've seen ministers come and go. We've seen so many events and so many um, things happening in our country, Ghana. And when we compare those events to foreign countries like UK and America, it calls for immediate resignation and they don't even wait they don't even wait for the cabinet to come and tell them to resign they just resign because you have to do it it's, it's, it's part of the policy it's part of the nature it's part of the structure it's part of the constitution of that country so when you do anything wrong you don't wait for the cabinet to come and tell you to resign you have to resign but not in Ghana. We've seen so many dirty things going on and people just stay in power and in opposition and the leadership doesn't talk, doesn't say a word. They don't push them to resign even if the, the people involved are not ready to go out. So that is the conflict resolution that we're talking about. It's part of the structure of the constitution. It's part of the policies. And when anything bad happens, you as a leader should ensure that that individual, that member of parliament, that cabinet member should be punished or should be, should be sent out. We need to resolve, we need to change all that systems in Ghana, to be honest. Please, Charles, can you um, carry on? Because I'm a bit you know, passionate about these things. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But obviously, mm -hmm. uh, as I was saying, we may, as I was saying, we are all for one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it is sometimes it, 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 it can get you to be passionate Very. in the sense that <laughs> if you are patriotic, uh, that's what happens. It's just it makes it difficult, but mm -hmm. we must continue to work to obviously contain the situation so that we can actually enter the next stage of our development uh, process. It was quite interesting uh, what I. I saw today, I, I was watching a very old clip from Nkrumah okay. and, you know, the commentary, it, it was like, they, they did mention, they said, you have your independence, but in reality, your real independence uh, can really take off after 50 years. Now, we are 63 years. 63 three years. years! Since Ghana became independent. 63 independent. years! And so we must enter the next level, mm -hmm. which is the real independence. Running of the, the major countries. The real independence. Mm -hmm. I, I think at the moment, uh, 
the government that we have in Ghana now, the NPP administration, a, there is an element where you can see that we are edging. Because when we say Ghana uh, without aid or Ghana beyond aid, mm -hmm. that is that is a very serious statement, and that is a, that is a, a visionary. Mm -hmm. So you are entering another stage of your development process where you are truly taking independence. Now, another thing that you can actually um, <laughs> look at, which is quite interesting, mm -hmm. is that you, you have seen the patriarchs of democracy, mm -hmm. which is the United Kingdom, the United States of America, and all these other Western European countries. Mm -hmm. But currently, you can see that there is a loss of direction mm -hmm. in leadership in these countries. In these countries, yeah. So, a lot of countries have entered a time that, oh, we can do everything because if America, I mean, look at this country. If there's people, chaos in people, America. People's mm -hmm. rights are taken away, are being taken away for whatever reasons I use. Police brutality is the order of the yeah, day. Yeah, that is, that is, uh, I, I just can't believe what is happening. I just uh, don't even want to go there because in America, what really is happening is just uh, pathetic. It's just disgusting, to so, be honest. We, they, they really need the, the leadership as you're saying, of that country needs to, you know, to wake up because we are in the 21st century and these things shouldn't be happening, to be honest. So in terms of, uh, you know, the loss of leadership in these two major countries that have had such profound uh, influence on Ghana, mm -hmm. this is a time when our leader, Nana Dudankwa Akufuadu, mm -hmm. and his knowledge in law and so many uh, other things, can actually take proper leadership and lead because you see it is very easy for a lot of African countries to say oh they're not doing it we're not doing it either uh, even we will rig elections and get away with it because who is coming to check us are you with me yeah but this is a time it is an opportunity for Ghana to step up are you with me yeah. in, 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 in the way that we want to do our politics that we need to uh, curb the situation, we need to control ourselves, we need, we need to be patriotic and passionate, but at the same time, we need to be very objective. And let's not let the cat out of the bag. We need to contain So ourselves. let's talk about time management and charisma, right. and then we can obviously move on. Uh, move on. Yeah. Correct. So what do you think our, you know, our leaders' time frames are in terms of executing projects? You know, this one will come, they will say, the MPP came, they said um, one district, one factory, and there should be a time frame on it. Have they been able to achieve? Because every vision or every objective or every goal has to be smart. Smart means it has to be specific, it has to be realistic. Yes. You know, what they came up with, was it a realistic goal or an, a plan? It has to be achievable. You understand my point? Yes. It, it has to be measurable and it has to be timely as well. Yes. So, you know, let's get into the time management issue and let's see how it goes. Okay. So what do you think? The uh, present government and the previous ones, yes. how was their time management in terms of executing projects? It's good. So time management is, is very key in, in politics because when you come, you have a limited time in which to turn an economony around. The turn on is four years, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. And this is and it's difficult. Once to, again, mm -hmm. we are going to be touching on this subject, how to address mm -hmm. these challenges mm -hmm. later on. But so to turn something around. So even if you look at uh, your normal family, let's say you're you're in your family, you're doing everything, everything is going okay, you can come up uh, a business disaster for a family. Let's say somebody was doing a business like back in the day in Ghana and uh, I'm running a shop and one day my shop got burnt and I didn't even have insurance. <laughs> you know, these are some of the things that could happen in the past. Okay. So the, the, the man who was obviously the father who is running the family now ends up in a, a place where he doesn't even have money for his children, for basic food or to take his kids to school. Mm -hmm. The man has to turn his life around. Four years. Even a small family, it can be a real challenge. So the time 
frame for any 